Welcome to the Goalie Hacks podcast, the show dedicated to providing elite tips, hacks, and strategies to take your game to the next level, where we help you become an elite goaltender, one hack at a time. And now, here's your host, Mike Santaguida. Bang, bang. What is up, Packers? And welcome back to the show. I want to start off this episode introducing a pretty cool initiative you know, I'm going to start running on a bi-monthly basis, I think, you know, we'll sort of play it by ear. But about four months ago, after I started the show, uh, I asked on my Instagram story if you guys would be interested in participating in Q&A type episodes, where basically you guys submit your questions and have an opportunity to be featured on the show. And the feedback was nothing short of spectacular, and everyone seemed so pumped. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you guys an opportunity to have your voice and your question answered and featured on the Goalie Hacks podcast. You know, what an amazing opportunity for us to connect. What an amazing opportunity for you guys to get your personal questions answered and to be featured on the show. And what an amazing opportunity to bring this community closer together and for me to get to the root of your guys' problems right on the show. So in the next few weeks, once we get enough submissions, which hopefully will be plenty, I'd love for everybody who listens to the show to to submit a question. Um, I'd love to have too many to handle. You know, it would, it would make for some great episodes and, and for more to come. You know, even if you don't get picked in this current one, I think I'm just going to keep the submissions and then just build on them. Um, you know, and, and it'll just make for some great content that I know everybody will be able to connect with just because it's coming right from you guys. So once I get about five submissions, I'll sort through the questions and pick five guests to have their questions featured and answered per Q&A episode on the show. And so if you want to be featured and I encourage everyone to think about their questions, right? Like, you know, don't just jump on there. Think about it. You know, maybe some things you're struggling with and submit it to me if you want an opportunity to get your questions answered live on the Goalie Hacks podcast. So to submit your question, head to speakpipe.com slash goalie hacks. The link will also be under the podcast tab on my website at goaliehacks.com. And the link will also be in my bio on Instagram and Twitter, or you can just type in the URL into a web page to go right there, Speak pipe.com slash goalie hacks you literally just press record keep your question you know uh, under 60 seconds if you can help it you record yourself and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sift through them take those clips and put them right into the show and then answer your questions live off the top so um, I'm really excited for this initiative I always run these Q&A's the influencer Q&A's student guest Q&A's and now I'm giving you guys an opportunity to be featured on my podcast, the people who support my show, and I couldn't be happier to sort of bring you guys into the mix here. So, um, you know, head over to speakpipe.com slash goalie hacks to get started today. Shout out to my newest Patreon this week, Shea Spanier hailing from Williston, Vermont. Shea and I have been working together for some time now, and I couldn't be happier to bring him into my inner circle. And Shea and I met, uh, Shea actually watched me play at Vermont, and that's sort of how we we started chatting about four or five months ago, right when I came online. But thanks for your support, Shea, and I'm looking forward to working together and continue to help you pursue your journey of getting to pro hockey. We now have 10 Inner Circle members, and the feedback has been awesome so far. And if you want a chance to join our private group chat and be a part of our monthly mentorship Zoom sessions where I give a talk and then open it up to Q&A from everyone, uh, you know, people have an opportunity. We, we go back and forth, basically. It's, it's a really awesome opportunity to connect with me and other like-minded individuals and, you know, just continuing to build and grow your game. So... If you're looking to speed up your development, you know, just consider becoming a part of my mentorship program for some great value and as well as some great fun. We love to hang out. You know, we love to have fun and uh, post polls and stuff in the group all the time. And, and we have a blast. So head to patreon.com slash goalie hacks for more details or also click the link included in the show notes to get started today. Shout out to NeuroTracker, our main sponsor on the show. And we are so close to opening the new NTX platform up to the public. They're just putting the finishing touches on the registration process. And then you guys will get access to an early bird discount. Unfortunately, it's not the same discount as the initial early bird as that has come and went. And I think that's only fair to the people that took advantage of that and jumped on it right away. And so you get savings on this one, not as much as the beginning. In the begin that, that first early bird discount, you're getting close to 40% off, which was just out of this world. I don't think you'll ever see that again. So 
make sure when this goes live, you guys take advantage of this offer because there likely won't be savings like this again in the near future. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for more details in the coming weeks. Without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. I know you guys are going to love the chat Jared and I had today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Goalie Hacks podcast. Today on the show, I have the pleasure of being joined by a fellow Avon Old Farms alumni, former goalie, and now the associate head coach of UMass Amherst, Jared DeMichael. Coach DeMichael has been playing and coaching at the next level for over 15 plus years now, winning several league awards and three league championships during his time playing in the Atlantic Hockey Division, Division I Hockey for RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. He went on to play over 30 plus pro games in the ECHL and five games in the American Hockey League before retiring in 2012. After coaching two years at the D3 level, he's now been a Division I coach for the last six years. Jared, how you doing, coach? Really happy to have you on the show. Doing well, Mike. Thanks for having me. Always always good to talk to a fellow winged beaver, Avon Old Farms alum. Yeah, yeah, it's great to connect, man. I, I didn't realize you were an Avon alum until I looked up your elite prospects page and I saw you were at St. Lawrence a bit too while I was at UVN. Um, and we played against each other actually, actually pretty often, almost every year, I believe, if you remember. Yeah, no, I remember that. Though. I think, I think we we might have beat you one time. Another time, though, you stood on your head. You were pretty nasty the one game. I remember being kind of bitter about losing the game, but then you're an Avon guy, so that kind of softened the loss a little bit. <laughs> no, it was good. It was always a dogfight when we. You guys had some great goalies come through St. Lawrence there, and now obviously you're at UMass too, and uh, things have really really turned around for the program there, honestly, since I've been there and, and now you being there for the last little bit. Um, who were your coaches while you were at Avon? I'm curious. The um, So the the legend, John Gardner, I'm sure he was your coach. He, he was oh, yeah. head coach when I was there. And then uh, Dan Murphy was one of the assistant coaches. He went on to Taft, and I think he's at St. Paul's now. And then right on. Brian Doyle was one of the assistants. He's still there now. I think he might yeah. be the – the Dean of discipline. And then, uh, Rob Gagnon <laughs> was a, uh, was a volunteer coach, but Rob went on to coach, um, a couple prep schools and at Cushing and stuff like that. So we had, we had, we had a really good staff, a really good group of guys. I mean, we won the new England championship in Oh four. We went 27 and one. Wow. Deal. Nice. <laughs> Not a big deal. <laughs> Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know who hasn't been coached by John Gardner. I think he's been there for like 60 years now. Yeah. No, I mean, a a Avon's had a pretty good tradition of goalies. Um, like when I was looking at prep schools, like Todd Marr was kind of the goalie I saw play. And then Tim Warner played when, uh, when I was a freshman, he was a senior, he ended up going to UMass and then AJ Bacchino was there before me too. We were there together. He actually went on to UNH and now he's coaching wow. hockey and then John, John quick. I mean, he, he's Jonathan quick now, but at the time it was John quick and I, we were the two goalies at, at Avon and even our, our third stringer, Ryan Donovan was actually a division three, all American. So I not wow. know it, but we had kind of a wagon between the pipes for goalies at Avon at that time. Wow. I didn't know that you played with them. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, that's some tough competition, honestly, <laughs> to, to <laughs> sort of, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> try no, to get we, some uh, minutes there, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, whatever. Our our goalies at Avon, we were we were pretty pretty damn good, and uh, it was tough to get time there and stuff like that. But I mean, whatever. Being a goalie, you got to get used to the grind. So uh, yeah, I think it was a good thing for me to experience in high school and kind of prepare me for juniors and college and stuff like that. I mean, would have liked to get a little bit more playing time, but uh, obviously, Quick played really really well and deserved all the minutes that he got. Um, would have been just nice to get thrown a bone every once in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, it is what it is. We won a championship and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, shout out to Avon old farms. <laughs> um, and, uh, we'll get into that a little bit more, but, uh, let's jump right in and get going. You know, maybe you can start off by telling our listeners a bit about your journey, you know, just leading up to where we are today. For sure. So, um, I, I grew up in a small town called Harlington, Connecticut, um, grew up a huge Hartford Whalers fan. That's how my family got into hockey. My dad, uh, my dad's more of a, a baseball, basketball guy, um, but we used to go to Whalers games, and that's what got me into it. And then uh, started off as a Ford, and then the first year of Pee Wee, I got cut from every single team. 
So uh, I'm like, hey, if I'm a duster, I might as well switch positions and play street <laughs> hockey and try goalies and loved Sean Burke and Jason Muzzati for the Whalers back in the day. So I was like, why don't I try out this goalie thing? And um, picked it up pretty fast and within a few years was playing AAA. Nice. And, um, after playing AAA, like in, in Connecticut, like you, you go to prep school, um, juniors didn't kind of have the same notoriety that it does now. And um, looked at a few different prep schools, but Avon was always kind of my dream school. Like I, I played for Avon Youth Hockey, um, so I'd seen a good amount of Avon's games. Saw the Avon Army, knew the tradition of good goalies that came through Avon. So ended up going to Avon, and then was yeah. on for four years. After four years of Avon, um, went on to play two years of junior hockey. Um, my first year, I was in the NA. I was in the Nall. Um, playing for Springfield. And then the second year I started off in the EJ with the the Boston junior Harbor Wolves who are now defunct. And then um, finished off in the USHL with the Indiana ice and the Chicago steel. And then was really lucky in March that I got an opportunity to go to RIT and then um, went to RIT for four years. And then after four years, of RIT, we had a pretty good year. My senior year, our, our team made it to the frozen four, which was an unreal experience. Yeah. And then, um, played parts of two seasons pro. And after those two years of pro, my second year of pro, I was kind of packing up my car and packing up my bags more than I was stopping pucks. So I thought I'd need to get into a different profession and, uh, <laughs> got, got into coaching and, um, haven't turned back since I did. I was at NAS for, um, two years and one year recruiting it was a brand new program. And then was at St. Lawrence for two years. And we had some pretty good success there. We went to the ECAC final four for two years and our goalie at St. Lawrence, had a ton of success. And then I've been at uh, UMass for the last four. We, uh, we went to the national championship last season and this season we're on track to be uh, an NCAA tournament team until the uh, coronavirus and the COVIDs took over the world. So, yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate, man. Uh, yeah. For everybody, you know, crazy how it all just sort of came to an end and it's just a wash all the seniors, you know what I mean? That, uh, I'm sure had high hopes, um, you know, to, to do something big, but, uh, it is what it is. I guess we got to sort of roll with the punches and I'm sure that you're, you're putting in a lot of work on the recruiting side to, to keep the, the good tradition going that, uh, uh Cal McCarr has, has sort of, I guess, started there, uh, lighting a fire in that program. Um, I didn't realize you, you actually grew up around Avon initially before I had looked at uh, your background, but, Maybe you could just touch on your, you know, your prep school experience a little bit. Do you think going there and going the prep school route and set you up for success throughout your career, both as a goalie and professionally? Like, what are some of the pros and cons, in your opinion, going that route? Yeah, no, I mean, like I said earlier, um, I like I played youth hockey for the Avon Panthers out of the same rank where Avon Old Farms is. Like, that's the the first time I, I put on goalie pads was first year Pee Wee, so I played there. And like I said, like I'd go to the Avon games and. They, I thought they always had the best student section um, and you always knew about players going on to play division one and playing pro and um, alums like Brian Leach. He was yeah. kind of a big name at that time. Um, but there was a multitude of guys going on and having success at the college and at the NHL level. Um, so I looked at, I, I basically narrowed it down to like four schools. Um, and I was maybe a little hesitant with Avon with it being all guys at first. Um, yeah. but when I, when I did my overnight and, and met a bunch of the guys, um, I, it kind of just hit it off and felt really, really comfortable. And, um, I was really, really happy with my decision. I mean, I ended up repeating my freshman year and did four full years there. And, um, nice. I wish more kids did it today, but I, I mean, not trying to pump my tires, but I was tri varsity. I was varsity soccer, varsity hockey, Unreal. varsity oh, baseball. Wow. Um, and we I do a good baseball team there too. Yeah. No, we, we had a, we had a wagon of a baseball team there too. Um, but, uh, like I, I felt like my parents and I felt like at that time, like just prep school was the way to go being in Connecticut. And, um, my family moved right into Avon at the end of my sophomore year. Um, not trying to whatever be too much of a softy, but I'm a little bit of a mama's boy. I, I lived on campus was a monitor <laughs> and all that good stuff. But on, on Wednesdays and Saturdays, my mom would bring me like her homemade pasta sauce and pasta and chicken parm. Um, oh man, you're lucky think, buddy. Yeah. I think, I think the food's a little bit better now at Avon than when I was there, but we had like, turkey. I don't know, man, I'm not too far <laughs> off. I, I really? don't know. 
they, when I was there, like we had uh, like turkey sandwiches and tomato soup on Wednesdays, and like we got a game coming up. Like I'm an I'm an Italian boy. Like give me some pasta, give me some carbs, give me some chicken. Like let's go. And um, but no, like I, I'm really really happy about going going to Avon Experience, and I still have whatever lifelong friends from there. Um, four of my groomsmen were guys that I went to high school with at Avon. Um, so I still keep in, to, in touch with a lot of guys from Avon, even being a coach now, like the Avon network for, for hockey wise, for me in recruiting, like I can call guys that are NHL scouts or prep school coaches or junior coaches. Yeah. Um, they'll answer. So it's, been, it's been helpful on that. And I mean, um, it really, really helped out academically, like the smaller classroom sizes and stuff like that. Um, for sure. I do think it is a little bit different now, like junior hockey has a little bit more of a pull. I think in today's day and age, like I think I still would have gone to prep school um, being a Connecticut kid, but I don't know if I would have gone for all four years, like maybe just junior, senior year um, and things like, yeah. I mean, in, in hindsight, like probably should have gone to a place where maybe I would have got more time and stuff like that. But yeah, um, whatever. Sometimes you got to go through some, some bumps in the road to make you earn it and make you learn to grind and stuff like that. But yeah. no, fun still has a special place in my heart. I still go back for the, the Christmas classic every year for recruiting and whatnot. Um, hit up the, uh, the, the, the pizza place there in town and uh, get a bite to eat. So no, Avon's an awesome spot. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you kind of, you said something there about repeating and, and it's funny actually when I was at Avon, when I, and you got, you were coached by uh, John Gardner as well. You know, he walked into my room. Uh, I remember my senior year it was like five games in and I was doing really good. And, um, I had gotten an offer from like Trinity, Trinity college D3 yeah. and they were sort of going to lowball me into the school. And he was like, where are you going to take it? And I was like, not really, you know, yeah. and he's like, well, why not? And I was like, well, I want to play division one. And at the time, you know, that was sort of the time where I think that people, a lot of college coaches and stuff were really starting to say like, Hey, we want to see you go play junior first. Um, and he was really against it. And obviously things have changed a bit. But going back to what you said about repeating, repeating a year for me, because I, I didn't go, go there four years. I three years here at public school in, in Toronto and in Southern Ontario. And um, but then repeating my junior year and sort of getting another crack at like doing the school thing and just sort of lengthening my development, I think really sort of worked in my favor. Um, and you obviously eventually figured it out as well. Yeah. Um, so after Avon, you went to play in the NHL. Uh, and then the following year in the EJ and then the USHL as well, that same season, you know, maybe describe to us the process you went through to, to get your foot in the door with those opportunities um, to eventually get an opportunity to play at the USHL level and work your way up. Yeah. What's uh, what's kind of funny too, Mike, my, my senior year of high school, um, I was actually more recruited for baseball than I was for hockey. Um, Trinity, like you mentioned, they're a NESCAC school. I was actually looking at Williams and the baseball coach wanted me really bad. Um, and I was a pretty strong student, but I didn't do the best on SAT. I think I you needed to get it like around an 1150. And I was just below that, like around 1100 or 1120. Yeah. Um, but if I had gotten that, like I probably was going to go right to school and go to Williams. And I remember meeting with the, the hockey coach and the hockey coach is like, yeah, like the baseball coach really wants you. Like you can be our third stringer for four years. And like Williams is an unreal education. So I was seriously yeah. considering it. And, when I couldn't get my SATs up, I was like, Hey, like I really, really love hockey. So I'm going to give this junior hockey thing a whirl. Um, right. and how it kind of happened in the NA was, uh, I, I, I played some games for the Hartford junior wolf pack, which was just starting up in the AJHL, the Atlantic junior hockey league. And our coach had a connection with Springfield. Um, and my goalie coach that I did a lot of time with at that time was Dan Stewart. And he knew the coaches out there in the uh, Springfield, they didn't draft me. They didn't tender me. Um, they saw me play a few times, but they asked me to come out to an open camp. Um, I guess I played halfway decent at the open camp. And then I got invited to their invite camp and at the invite camp played really, really well, um, beat out some draft picks. And there was one returning goalie on that team with me. His name was Wes Russell. He was actually committed to Quinnipiac and um, ended up making that team just off of going to an open camp and then beating out the draft pick goalie um, nice, and getting man. from there. But the, just junior hockey, to, from prep school to junior hockey, I just felt like the the NA was maybe just a little bit stronger, a little bit more controlled. Um, 
at that time, like I thought prep school had like a ton of speed and skill, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't quite as much as a man's game in the null. Like the null at that time was, we were in the, in Springfield, I played in the NA South and that, that division was like old school with the Texas tornado. And there was probably at least one to two fights every single game. And, And the NA is not like that whatsoever like that at all now. Um, but the, the NA South back then was, was a grind. I remember my first road trip, um, that year in the NA Santa Fe was just moved from Lone Star, Texas. And it happened like two weeks before the season. So we didn't have time to book a flight. So we had to bus from Springfield, Illinois to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And me being a prep school kid, like in prep school, like you're on the bus for an hour and a half, two hours, maybe, but got on that 26 hour bus ride and I don't have a pillow. I don't have a blanket. Like I'm just sitting there like freezing my nuts off. And, uh, <laughs> we, we finally went to a ref stop and I bought like a, a white wolf, like coyote looking thing, blanket and a pillow. Like you'd see like people wearing those funny shirts that people wear with like white wolves on them. I had like yeah. a huge blanket like that. And that was like my blanket and pillow for the year. And the guys <laughs> hurt me for it, but I love that thing. <sighs> uh. Yeah, so, uh, you know, y- y- and then getting to the USHL, you mm-hmm. know, for you, uh, what was the hardest part about about transitioning from from prep and then then all the way to tier one junior in the U.S. The um, I- I'd probably say just like being a goalie at that time for me, like I was underdeveloped, Mike. Like I was whatever yeah. six one, but like I was one hundred and seventy pounds, one hundred and sixty five pounds, soaking wet, like. I wasn't very explosive. Like I think I had some pretty strong compete and a decent goalie IQ, but just you're playing against kids that are more physically mature, um, more mentally mature. And uh, just finding that consistency was tough. Um, After my first year in the NA, like I thought it went pretty well. And at the end of the year meeting, my my coach was just like, Hey, like um, you're going to have to try out again all over for the team. And when he told me that, I'm like, well, like if I'm not guaranteed a spot after like kind of grinding it out for a year, like I, look for other places. And, um, I went and tried out for the Chicago steel in the USHL, the goalie coach in, in the NA had just been hired there for Chicago. So I felt the connection. Um, nice. and he was just like, Hey, like we need an older goalie. I was going to be an age out. And he's like, we want someone with experience and felt like pretty connected there and went to camp, had a solid camp. And then going into like the last day of tryouts, they traded for another overage goalie that had USHL experience already. So they were like, Hey, like, we're going to cut you loose. Like we're not carrying two overage goalies. So yeah. when it happened, um, didn't really have a team. And then the Harbor Wolves team in the EJ gave me a call. We're just like, Hey, you can play just about every single game uh, at that time too. The EJ had a really good reputation with being, being a lot of new England schools in the area. It was really easy for teams to come out and see a play. And um, our team on the Harbor Wolves, we were not the strongest. That's me sugarcoating it pretty nicely like we were pretty weak but I, I faced a ton of shots got to play a lot of important minutes and around Thanksgiving time uh, an Indiana ice scout I guess was at a few of our games saw me play thought I played well and was like hey like do you want to come out to the USHL and our team was kind of struggling and um, I was emailing coaches was like going up and talking to coaches after games being like hey like What's, what's your situation at with goalies? Like, what, how would you think today? What do you think I can get better at? And was kind of getting the Heisman from some school. So I was like, Hey, like if I go out to the USHL and that's the best league, if I have success out here, like there, there's no way that they can doubt that I'm a division one goalie. So, um, went out to the ice. It took me like, I was maybe out there for like two or three weeks before USA hockey, like opened up my rights. And then they finally did my first game. Like I would just say, I played fine. Like, I wasn't good. I wasn't bad. I was just fine. And then kind of crazy was home for Christmas time. And on Christmas Eve, I was skating at Avon old farms with some other former players that come back from college and junior and skate there and got off the ice on Christmas Eve. And I got a call from the coach there on the ice. And he was just like, Hey, um, just want to let you know, you uh, were bringing in another overage Ford. And because of that, we're going to have to trade you or put you on waivers. Um, I know this isn't what you want to hear, but Merry Christmas. So I was like, oh crap, like I'm without a team again. I'm an overager. And um, I'll never forget on Christmas day, I, I just bought like a ton of Indiana ice swag. Like I had a t-shirt and a hoodie and stuff oh like God. that. 
my mom already had it all wrapped up, still gave it to her on Christmas. And I'll never forget, like she's opening up the presents and she's got tears coming down her eyes. Cause the team that I just got released from traded from, I gave her their, their swag for Christmas. So that was kind of a little bit funny, whatever, a little emotional, but um, the Chicago steel ended up picking me up on Christmas day. And then Chris, the day after Christmas boxing day, I drove out to Chicago, got out there um, and Chicago, our, our team was just okay, but I ended up playing a decent amount of minutes. And um, I got, I mean, uh, I had some good games, had some bad games, just trying to find that consistency, but the, the USHL back then, and now is it's, it's the number one league in the U S just the, the amount of skill, the amount of speed the the coaching in the league too. Um, both teams that I played for in the USHL had goalie coaches. Um, so like those types of things, like it really come a long way from what it was maybe five years before I got into junior, but, um, it was no joke. Like what, um, the team that won it that year was Des Moines and they had Kyle Ocposo and Trevor Lewis and Jeff Petrie. Um, they had a really, really good team and our team in Chicago, we were in last place, but we legged the league in commitments. We had like 20 plus commitments. Wow. So if you're in last place and you got 20 plus commitments, like it's a pretty good league. Mm-hmm.